And to discuss this latest from the government and other issues around the NSARS protest is the public affairs analyst, Dami Adebayo. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, of what impact will the vice president's apology and reaffirmation of the government's commitment to police reforms be um, with regards to these protests? Uh, thank you for asking. Just before I answer, I want to um, go back to the news report as well. Um, I heard the Ocean State report on, you know, the governor um, allegedly being attacked by thugs as well. And I think it's convenient to let the government narrative of labeling protesters as thugs fly as well, because this was a protest that was holding, that the governor attended, and, you know, security aides shot into a crowd, killed two people, and injured a third as well. So again, if the, you know, spokesperson of the governor is focusing on damaged cars, then I'm pretty sure that, you know, the citizens of the states, where they've just had two people killed, by his aides would not be very pleased and I should not take that from him. Um, but um, back to your question, um, the, the vice president's apology is coming late and we need to remember that the best apology is a restitution for the victims and a commitment that the constitutional rights of Nigerians will never be violated again by agents of the state, whether the Nigerians are young, whether they're old, whether they're queer, whether they're straight, whether they're Christian, Muslim, Shiite Muslim, or even traditional as well. And until that happens, all of these are empty platitudes. Because, I mean, the government that he's a part of has put out a solution that a state governor, the governor of Rivers, is already saying, um, is already punching holes before it's executed. He said there's a long road ahead. And, you know, I'm glad that the protesters look ready for it and, you know, I'm fully with them. Uh, also quickly share your thoughts about the recommendation by the presidential panel on uh, reform of SARS that uh, 37 police officers be dismissed and 24 uh, would be prosecuted following about 113 complaints on alleged human rights violations. Um, it has been received by I mean, the panel. I mean, these are complaints. I, I believe the majority of them were from 2018 as well. So if you're acting on 2018, you know, um, complaints in 2020, shows one that, you know, justice is very slow and might not be fast enough for people that are victims um, of police excesses. It also highlights the fact that we've um, had to come to this stage where we've had to act on these reports. So now we're left to think what would have happened if this protest didn't happen or if they haven't happened at the scale in which they have. And uh, maybe the government is simply trying to placate people to um, reduce the fervor in which they actually ask for this much needed reforms. Uh, and, and also, the, the government, you know, uh, well, has started making efforts to assuage the protesters. Um, but a lot of these protesters don't seem um, to believe in these moves made by the government. It doesn't seem to be producing any, any results. What exactly, in specific terms, do you think must be done that would end the protest, especially um, now that it seems like the scope of issues are widening? I don't think the scope of issues are widening. I think the issue still remains in SARS. And again, for every proclamation, for every statement, people have not seen the action to back it up as well. You know, you can't claim to have, you know, to be the IGP and to have summoned all policemen to Abuja to report for um, psychoanalysis or treatment. And you still have, you know, this policeman on the road, still brutalizing people, saying, um, we saw protesters march yesterday, um, to a SARS office in Anambra and still get shot at as well. So again, it, it's very easy for the governments, and successive governments have done this, not just this government as well. Um, they have made promises and they have failed um, to carry them out and they've just lost a lot of goodwill with a lot of people. So protesters are still out because they do not believe that the government is fully committed to this. They believe the government has made statements like they always do, um, but have not seen um, sufficient action or any action um, that will make them um, stay home. All right, and of course, um, the army a few hours ago also put out um, a, a, new, a release, you know, of course, uh, talking about cr uh, Operation Crocodile Smile. Uh, do you think that might also, um, or how do you think that will play out, you know, with regards to the protests? I mean, the timing is very shady. I mean, we've had um, the army that has been keen to show its loyalty to the president. And rather than to the country and its citizens, because 
I mean, the country is not the president. The country is all of us, all of us that live in it, all of us that, you know, um, are under the flag or live within the borders, as they may. Um, so I think it's unfortunate. But again, the army has seems very determined to lose its goodwill with the people. And, you know, why should we stop them now? Let them go ahead. How do you think this plays out if, you know, the government doesn't act soon? I think the protests will continue and then they'd be forced to act soon. Or they'd wish they'd acted sooner as well. Because here's the thing, we, you know, especially for some states, for like, for Lagos states, for instance, if they hadn't taken as much time as they had in putting out the first form of reforms or the steps as well, maybe the favor would have died down. Maybe you'd have constructive conversations. But they've waited so long to do this, and other issues have popped up. Imagine if they had done this on Monday. But on Monday, we had protesters being shot at in Surulere. So the thing is, for every step that the government takes, the inaction that they have allowed to fester creates new problems for them. So it's unfortunate, but again, protesters are well within their rights to stay until they believe that the government is determined or will carry out these things regardless of the fact of whether they're on the streets or in their homes. Damia Debayo, thank you so much for speaking with us. I would love to have another conversation. Well, it's a pleasure. Look forward to it. Bye-bye. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.